Welcome back to lecture 10 of aquaculture engineering. This will be a review of another important aquaculture species, actually our last, and that is the, the mudfish or the common snakehead. Uh, but the common snakehead is the international name. The scientific name is Canastriata. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the characteristics and uh, production cycles of the uh, common snakehead or uh, mudfish, learn the various selection criteria in its production, uh, identify the environment and water quality requirements for its production, and become familiar with the common cultural practices uh, in its production. And other also other considerations in the uh, growing of this uh, species, aquaculture species. Well, different sources have different information, but locally, the the um, the Philippine Council for uh, Agriculture and uh, Natural Resources, okay, Research and Development, or PICARD, they have. Uh, identify the mudfish as a local species. And uh, internationally, they are, we have also resources that, say, that are saying that these are well introduced in the Philippines. But as far as, as we are concerned, in the, in the grow, growing of this species in aquaculture, we, are, we, we know that we have the, the common uh, snakehead as being dominant in shallow waters, such as lakes, rivers, swamps, and mangroves. And it matures in about six months, up to already around 36.5 centimeters long. Uh, and another remarkable characteristic of this species is that it tolerates high temperatures and breathes atmospheric uh, air or oxygen. And with these two characteristics, uh, the mudfish is thus treated as a hardy and even uh, invasive space species. And in the conservation list of uh, species, it's listed as a, uh, a species of least concern, which means it's not threatened or even endangered. And more so endangered, okay? So, uh, well, it, as, as it is treated as an invasive species, um, well, it's also because that it is aggressive and territorial and uh, overall carnivorous. And it feeds on frogs, snakes, insects, worms, crustaceans, okay, <laughs> including prawns. Also small birds and mammals, and most importantly, other fish. So it's piscivorous. Thus, it could not be grown with uh, prawns, and also with the tilapia, because uh, this is actually a known predator of tilapia. Okay, let's go to the production cycle of the mudfish. The snakehead or the mudfish is a solitary species, except during spawning. Uh, but while it's solitary, it, has, it is actually uh, monogamous. Okay, the fry hunt in groups, but Come the juvenile stage, the mudfish becomes solitary, only to uh, find a mate during the spawning season. Uh, there's no identified spawning season for, for the species, but uh, it can mate anytime given favorable conditions. And at most, it could mate twice a year. Uh, it has been observed that they mostly spawn with uh, the peak rainfall of a uh, location. The adults can either appear or nest or for spawning in aquatic uh, vegetation or just lay directly in the water by which the fertilized eggs uh, simply flow to the surface of the water. And uh, the, the mudfish parents or uh, the, the, the parents uh, guard them or not, it depends. But if ever they're the most um, protective parents or are or three species. After one 
to three days, the eggs hatch into larvae. The larvae become juveniles and grow into fingerlings, staying so for uh, four to six months. The adult is 30 centimeters long and between 250 to 500 grams in weight. Uh, males reach sexual maturity in 35 days, while the females in around two years. Uh, with this characteristic, okay, since the, the, the species lays around 100 to 500 eggs, if you could compare it to other spe uh, fish species, this is relatively low. And um, probably it's because of the higher uh, survival rate of, the, of the, the eggs into maturity. Okay? Um, and, and it's partly because of the uh, adults or the parents being uh, very protective of their young. In, in the culture, the eggs, okay, uh, well, well the, the, the spawning will have to involve the, the male uh, fertilizing the eggs of the female, okay, around up to 5,000 eggs. And in the culture, the eggs that float in the surface, they are harvested and moved to nursery feed tanks where they uh, grow in, uh, up, uh, into larvae into larvae up to 40 millimeters, okay? Uh, again, this is uh, an animal, this is, um, um, th there's no ovary. So uh, I mean, so the, the animal fertilization happens outside of the body. Okay, so the, the larvae are then transferred to grow-outs for the uh, fingerling stage and harvested uh, in four to six months. Uh, While well, the species is hardy in uh, characteristic, okay, as can be noted by the optimal oxygen levels as shown, okay, and we're now with the environmental and water quality requirements. Uh, there are other also uh, environmental and water quality requirements that require optimal uh, values for the survival of the species. And um, the range, for example, of temperature while it can survive in higher temperatures, uh, the optimal is begins at 36.8 degrees Celsius. So it's, it prefers tropical uh, climates. The mudfish prefers living one to two meters from the water surface. And while well, it can survive in shallow and highly vegetated water bodies in the natural habitat, okay? Uh, other optimal ranges include optimal, uh, optimal alkalinity between 30 to 500 milligrams per liter, the hardness uh, from 120 to 500 milligrams per liter, and the pH between 4.0 to 9.0. For the cultural practices, here are some of the known ones that are recorded okay, by technologists. Let us begin with its preference for shallow water areas. And thus, it allows for the growing of the species in rice fields, irrigation canals, ditches, and bottle pits. Bottle pits are uh, in, in the construction industry, okay? With intensive culture of rice, the wild populations are also being affected. In culture, the mudfish uh, stocking density can be about 100,000 per hectare, which is uh, relatively high compared to other species species. This is supported by the ability of the mudfish to breathe uh, atmospheric air. The adult mudfish is carnivorous again and so also for, for the fry and the fingerlings uh, they are uh, also carnivorous and they're fed, uh, they're supposed to be fed soup, planktons, uh, rotifers, and copepods. Uh, and also the fingerlings already begin eating uh, earthworms, Pagots and other live feeds. So more than carnivorous, the mudfish are known to be cannibalistic, so in cultures, uh, sorting of size should be done to reduce variation and avoid cannibalism. So the, the, the bigger mudfish could eat the smaller, um, smaller um, finger, uh, fingerlings. Okay? So that those, that, to avoid that, uh, sorting in culture tanks should be uh, done. 
All right, this is the end of the review of the selected of, of uh, selected aquaculture species. Uh, we are now going to proceed with the site selection of uh, an aquaculture project location. This will be in the next lecture. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>